It's early Monday morning, 4 a.m. Check up also, family call 70. A lot of yelling, uh, the other person supposedly hung up the phone. Police respond to a 911 call. We have says she has a restraining order and he's climbing in the window. Family trouble. One of over 200 domestic disputes the cops in this precinct see each month. What are you doing, Donnie? She called me over here. So what? We're supposed to stay away. These officers are going to arrest this man for violating his restraining order. He was trying to break into the home where his ex-girlfriend lives with their son. Why are you doing this? Hey, Daddy, how do we do? All right? All we do. After a long night of arguing, she finally called the police. You gotta take it, pal. He'll spend the night in jail. She can fall asleep without fear, knowing he won't be coming back. But what about their three-year-old son? What are his fears? What is he feeling? Time and time again, he has watched his parents come to blows. His father spent six months in jail for assaulting his mother. And the police have been called to his home 20 times in the last year. How much more can you take? I love him. How does a little boy begin to understand what he's witnessed? And what will happen to him and the millions of children just like him? I love my mommy and my daddy. Yeah. Children living with domestic violence. I wasn't up downstairs. I was in my room. And what did you hear? Fighting. He was bad. He was bad? Was he bad to you? No, he was bad to you. He said he'll kill my mom first and then he'll kill us. I'm always afraid of him because you know why? He's always bad to my mom and he always, he always makes her sick. Like veterans of war, all of these children have witnessed torture and terrorism. But their war zone is not in some far off country. It's in their own homes. My mother was screaming, she was crying. It was in this home, almost a year ago, that Betsy Pagan's children woke to the terrifying screams of their mother pleading for her life. He was stabbing me. He was telling me, die. I hate you. Why did you leave me? I hate you. I hate you. I was like, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. That's when the kids heard me. You had been asleep. And what did you hear? Screams. Fired. When I went in, the bed was bloody, and the, f the rug had blood on it. He was on top of my mother, and he was just stabbing her. What did you do then? I saw the blood, so I called 911. Jean, Marino, and Betsa had seen their mother and their stepfather fight and argue for years. They were all relieved when their mother finally broke up with him. No one thought he would try to kill her. I was covered with blood. I, I had lost so much blood. And that's when I saw Betsa. She jumped on him from the back, and she pulled him off from me and threw him on the floor. I was, like, saying, oh, my God, please don't let her die. And she was already on top of me with her body covering mine to save me. He was like, please, uh, she was like, please don't kill my mommy. Please don't do this to my mommy. And when I saw he was ready to come and stab her, I just pushed her out the way. And that's when he stabbed me right on my chest. You punctured a lung too, didn't you? You got a stab wound in the heart? Yeah. Betsy Pagan counted 18 stab wounds on her body. She spent eight months recuperating at the Casa Mirna shelter for battered women. Her ex-boyfriend is in prison for attempted murder. Oh, love you, big man. But her children still don't feel safe. The memory of that night haunts them. They must be deeply scarred by this and worried about you. Yes, they are. And what are some of the effects? They woke up at night and go in my bed and he used to shake me up. Mom, mom, you OK? to see if I was breathing. Because they were Sometimes I wake up and I have my kids with their head in my heart to hear if I was, you know, to see if I was alive or something. If you've seen something terrifying happen to a parent or a loved one, you are going to carry with you a fear that it will happen again.
Betsy McAllister Groves is a therapist who runs the Child Witness to Violence Project at Boston City Hospital. Children may become more distractible, more anxious, sometimes more aggressive. We also see behavioral changes in the other direction, that children may become more passive, may look depressed, may look preoccupied, may not play spontaneously anymore. We've seen sleep disturbances in children. Children who witness a terrifying event have trouble sleeping. They may have nightmares, they may wake frequently at night. Experts agree that all of these symptoms are associated with post-traumatic stress syndrome. That's a psychiatric disorder more commonly used to diagnose soldiers in combat. And just like veterans of war, witnessing domestic violence evokes terror, anxiety, and flashbacks in these children. I know it's a tough thing to, to think about, but do you think you'll ever be able to forget about it? No. Do you think it'll always be with you? Sometimes when I'm doing nothing, just like laying down or just sitting down watching TV or something like that, it just pops in my mind. I see like his face. And like, I see him like stabbing my mother and me jumping on him, pushing him. If I don't call 911, my mother will, should be dead. If he hadn't called 911, his mother would have died. Those thoughts still terrorize nine-year-old Jean. And the youngest, Lulu, won't even speak about what she witnessed that night. All of the children received counseling at the battered women's shelter. And the boys are continuing therapy in school. They say they are healing. The counselor in my school is helping me take it, is taking that out of my mind. Why would it be bad if it got back to your mind? You'll be dreaming about it. <sighs> the fear of dreams turning into nightmares makes bedtime really difficult for children who have been exposed to domestic violence. Two-year-old Genesis screams like this every night. She and her four siblings all witnessed their father's violent behavior for years. He's in jail now for going after their mother with a machete. I will kill somebody. But it is five-year-old Pedro's aggressive behavior that worries his mother the most. He's been kicked out of one school, has been involved in street fights, and seriously injured a child with a brick. He is currently being treated at the Child Witness to Violence Project. Children who are too young or too afraid to talk about their fears are encouraged to use play and art therapy to express themselves in order to heal. I, I want to be a good daddy. Four-year-old Navneet drew this picture of a monster for his counselors. He says the monster is his father, and Navneet is afraid he'll kill the family with the knife he's holding. He says it reminds him of the loud and bumpy sounds he heard one night. I thought that was that was a monster and that was a monster noise I thought. But that wasn't that was my dad. He he has wild monster noises. He has a bad attitude at people. Navneet's eight-year-old sister, Jasmine, drew this. Her counselor says her thoughts are red because they symbolize violence. But the knife has a window in it, showing a way out. I'm afraid that he might find us someday and kill us. After 11 years in a violent marriage, Bupinder Kaur fled with her three children. They are now in hiding. But the judge is forcing the children to have supervised visits with their father once a week at a neutral location. I think my father is not very nice. He's abusive. I don't want to see him. And what I think is, like, why does he have to be that way? Why can't he be like everyone else? Until you read the girls' Christmas lists, you really can't understand the loss of innocence for these children. Jasmine's top three wishes are to never see her father again, never in her lifetime. And the request that most little girls make, like a plea for more Barbie dolls, is listed far below. Sumit talks about how she used to feel lying in bed at night, listening to her parents fighting. Like, I'd feel like in my throat, I'd feel sick. Then I'd feel like my heart's in my mouth. 
like I'm eating it and then I'll die. That's what I used to think. It's hard to hear the stories from children. It's hard to know that our youngest children live sometimes with such danger and such chaos. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Betsa Pagan just celebrated her 13th birthday. Make a wish. Good one. Betsa told us that she feels good because she knows she's safe now. But she also feels bad because of what she had to go through. Things like that just don't go away so easily, she says. I love you. And later that night, her brother Marino proved that to be true. Marino, what's going on, baby? When his dreams hey. once again woke him. Hey, remember? Remember what I always say to you? Oh? No? We are safe here. It's nothing is gonna happen to us. Okay? It's over. It's over. All right? Okay, honey? <laughs>